Hello, my name is Sean. I'm a chartered engineer. I'm here today to talk with you about engineering. What it is, what an engineer does, and also answer any questions you might have. Today, we're going to look at what you can study at a university of a huge range of different engineering jobs. In addition, we'll go through what a typical working day looks like for an engineer. Engineering does involve a little bit of maths. So this slide looks a bit scary, but like everything, once you understand it, it's simple. This equation describes removing oil and gas from deep underground. Using an oil well, it describes how the oil it changes as it comes up the well and to the surface. It's the same as when you open a bottle of or can of fizzy drink. When you open a bottle of fizzy drink, the carbon dioxide gas, what's known as CO2, comes out of a liquid as bubbles because the pressure inside of a bottle has reduced. It's the same when you bring oil out for ground, the pressure is reduced and the gas bubbles out of it. Engineers use maths to describe something like this happening so they can create a way of doing it safely and efficiently. An engineer is someone who applies science to solve problems. At university, you study your chosen branch of engineering. Typically, this combines maths with physics or biology or chemistry. You also learn team building and teamwork. Engineering is a collaboration profession. At university, you both learn and teach. Everybody has strengths and weaknesses. Some people are very good at maths or process or bring people together. Everyone will struggle or find something difficult. The great thing about engineers is that they work together and help each other. If math or science is not something you are very good at, but you enjoy solving problems and are creative, then engineering could be a great career for you. At university, when you study engineering, you have opportunity to do lots of fun things. Engineers work all over the world. Some engineers travel to work on helicopters. This slide shows helicopter underwater escape training. If you use a helicopter to get to and from work on say an offshore oil rig, then you would do this training. Basically, you are inside a helicopter simulator which is plunged underwater, rotated upside down, and then you have to swim out of it. It's challenging, but also fun as everyone works together and supports each other. That's me in the photo on the left, actually taking part in the training. Engineering is a broad work category that refers to jobs that use science and mathematics to solve a variety of problems. Engineers work in many different disciplines that include mechanical, electrical, chemical, civil, and environmental engineering, among others. Engineering is hugely varied with thousands of different types of engineering jobs. And over the next couple of slides, you'll see that many different engineering job titles which are currently in the engineering field. As you can see, there's many more different job titles, um, including engineering secretary to marine engineering and nuclear engineer. As you'll see, we're exploring even more different job roles um, within engineering, from process design engineer to research engineer to production engineer. So there's so many different jobs as you'll see going through um, within the engineering field. On this last slide of looking at the different job roles within engineering, we've got security engineer, a transmission planning engineer, to a turbine engineer. So from this we can actually see how engineering is hugely varied with thousands of different types of jobs and engineering jobs available within the industry. Engineers are needed for everything from travel to energy to food and even the internet. Society depends on engineers solving problems and coming up with new and innovative ways of doing things. 
The world's greatest challenges will be solved by engineers. This slide shows the combine harvester. It is needed to harvest grain for food production. This food production process requires engineers, but before this can happen, the combine harvester itself needs to be designed and built. This involves large teams of engineers working in different industries with scientists and other professionals. Chemical engineers creating the rubber for the tyres and the paint to protect the metal from rusting. Process engineers creating the glass for the windscreen. Mechanical engineers creating the engine. Electrical engineers creating the power systems. Control and instrument engineers creating the program and linking all the sensors. As you can see, all engineers work in different fields to come together to create um, one product. And in this example, the combine harvester. A typical day for an engineer changes a lot. It might be mainly office space. This could be a modern or old office, an office on an oil rig, ship or in the desert or in central London. A career in engineering allows you to travel the world and explore new places whilst being paid to do so. Some of these pictures were from a business trip I took to Serbia. Between working, I was able to see the capital city, Belgrade, go to tourist attractions and try the local food. Last year, I had a business trip to Austria, which was near a ski resort. So myself and a colleague managed to spend a few days snowboarding. Every day, Working as an engineer is different with new challenges, opportunities and things to learn. This slide shows the design development of a new process prototype to make lead alloys which are used in car gearboxes. The video shows the explosion reaction which needs to be con contained inside the equipment. First, the engineer does their maths and then they might model it using computer simulations. Then a prototype might be made. Results have been analysed and the design improved. This slide shows some of the initial design work an engineer might do. This project was changing lifting points so that an automatic smart hook can connect to them. The challenge was reducing the thickness of a lifting point from 90 millimetres to just 38 millimetres without it snapping. To make sure it was safe and would not snap, I calculated the strength of the new design. A special height strength, still called S460, had to be used as normal steel was too weak and would fail. This slide shows the design process for new equipment. Engineers use computer simulations and modelling to design new equipment. The designs have been sent to a fabricator to be built. Once built, they are then shipped to the customer to be used. This slide shows a furnace used in the metals industry. A furnace is like a big oven that is used to melt metal. The flame in the furnace reaches about 2000 degrees, which is very hot. The furnace needs to be designed very carefully so it does not melt. The picture top left shows the computer simulation called Computer Computational Fluid Dynamics, in short CFD, which is a branch of fluid mechanics. This is used to see which parts of furnace will get very hot. The image bottom left was taken with a thermographic camera. This shows how hot different parts of a burner are. The engineer can then determine the most suitable materials to use that will not melt. In some work environments, engineers require protective equipment and special workwear, known as PPE. The pitch top middle shows the de decontamination process where an engineer is showered before removing the outer clothing and breathing equipment. The bottom middle picture shows training to recover someone who has collapsed. Some work environments are not breathable, so special breathing equipment, such as air cylinders and masks, must be worn. Engineers are often responsible for developing and managing ways of working, so that people are safe. On this slide, I'll be answering some questions, what I usually get asked. 
So the first question is advice I would give to my 15 to 16 year old self if I could go back in time. My answer to that would be, believe in yourself, you can do anything you set your mind to. The next question is, what is the world of study like after school? University is great, it's hard work, but you meet lots of people and have the opportunity to try new things. Universities have societies which are clubs for different things. It might be a sport like swimming, mountain climbing, snowboarding, or it could be something like artificial intelligence, lawyers without borders, Women in Business, Woodland Society, Aerospace Engineering Society, African Caribbean Society, American Football, Book Club, Chess Society, Craft Beer Appreciation Society, Filmmaking Society, K-Pop Society, Swing Dance Society, Table Tennis, Underwater Hockey. The university is a great experience and very good fun. Next question is, how my career route has changed direction and what triggered it. I started off with an apprenticeship in mechanical engineering. It was at work that I found out about all the different, different opportunities in engineering. This has resulted in me going to university to get the skills and qualifications I needed to do this job I do today. The next question is apprenticeship and HE, the advantages and disadvantages. An apprenticeship route is very good. It's highly valued by employers as it gives people an excellent base of knowledge and experience. You also get paid from day one whilst you're learning. The disadvantage is that without them, doing the HE is very difficult to progress to a more senior role. A higher education route is very good because it gives you the qualification to work in industry and progress to senior or more technical roles. The disadvantage is that you does not provide the same hands-on knowledge and experience. You may have to pay high fees and do not start earning until after you finish studying. What makes someone a good employee? To be honest, helpful and positive, try to be, try to solve problems yourself. And when you need to ask for help, come with some ideas or solutions to offer rather than just saying, I don't know what to do. The, next, the last question is, what extracurricular activities make someone more employable? Anything that involves helping people or teamwork. It could be volunteering for a local charity or being an active member in a club. I would recommend not to put on your CV that you spend your spare time playing computer games. This does not look good on the CV, in my opinion. I hope you found the talk interesting and insightful into the world of engineering. If you do need anything further, I'd recommend firstly visiting um, our, the website iomeki.org. In addition, I'd actually recommend if you've got any other further questions or queries, to contact myself or fellow STEM ambassadors using askanambassador at canterbury.ac.uk, where there are many STEM ambassadors in the engineering field happy to answer any questions or provide any advice you require. Thank you for listening.